What if you could do something that no one had ever done before, and that most people hadn't even considered possible? What if you could go as fast as a race car in a machine designed to keep up pace of play? I'm Jeff Eisenband, and we're here in Fort Mill, South Carolina, the home of Robbie Steen and his family. For the last two decades, they've operated Plum Quick Motors, specializing in high-performance golf cart motors. And what better way to show off the product than to use it yourself at the highest level? The Steens have become synonymous for a record they created. In 2013 and 2014, using the Bandit, they set the pace for world's fastest golf cart at 118.76 miles per hour. When we heard Robbie was trying to break his own record once again, we had to hop along for the ride. What drives a person to go after something so obscure, so dangerous, and so unique? Why create the fastest golf cart? It takes a certain person to do stuff that a lot of people look at and say, stupid, you're crazy, uh, what's the point? It's just a drive, you know, I, I can't explain it. If we're gonna do it, there's no benefit to do it and be average. If you're gonna do it, you gotta be extraordinary. People don't remember average, and that's just the way life is. I'll put it this way, I will be extremely disappointed if we don't break 150 on the second pass in a quarter mile. I'll be extremely disappointed. If you're gonna be the best, you're not gonna be the best by just accidentally falling into it. You gotta put in the time. And that's what separates people. A lot of people wanna do things, but they don't wanna sacrifice. I'm willing to make that sacrifice to reach certain points. And then when I get there and either don't have to drive or don't have the nerves, or satisfied, then I'll just turn it off and walk. But until then, I can't do that. It really was my father. At first, he wanted to try to get a golf cart to run 80 miles an hour. And we worked on that and a lot of trial and error, we got to that point. Robbie drives the car, I don't drive it because I'm not that stupid to drive a golf cart that fast. Robbie, you start really taking racing these golf carts seriously. This is the executioner here. How does this start the dream a little bit? Right, um, well this is one of the earlier drag cars. Uh, this one started drag racing with this one probably around 2008. It start out, this car would run the high 80s, low 90s. Later years, we put in a lithium battery pack in it, which was more power, lighter weight. This car was running like 105, 106 and an eighth of a mile. And so you said you got this over 100 miles per hour, which was the original goal with your father. That's right. what he wanted to see. Right. Right. But this didn't count in the Guinness Book of World right. Records. Why? Uh, yes, this, even though it's a golf cart, if you, as you see, we set this up as a single seater. For the Guinness World Record, uh, you know, it's got to start life as a golf cart. It's got to be a golf cart. Now, you can highly modify it, you know, but one of the things is it has to be a two seater. But also, it has to perform as a golf cart. It's, if, if, you know, it's got to be capable of playing golf. So the first time Robbie drove the cart, even though the cart caught on fire, you know, you thought that would end it for us trying that, but no, we kept pushing it and pushing it and pushing it until we got a cart to run in the hundreds, then we got a cart to run about 140, and now he's trying to get one to run about 150, 160. Now we said with the executioner, right, you needed to reset everything to have that sort of golf style that right. the Guinness Book of World Records right. wanted. So what'd you do with this one? Right. Basically what we did once we got turned down on that because it was a single seater, I thought, well, you know, the best way to go now is just go up a completely stock golf cart. They can't say nothing about that. So that's basically what we did. We went with a bone stock golf cart. Um, we put the golf bags on it and all. This cart, you can drive it just like a regular golf cart. That last one we saw had a cage. Most mm -hmm. of these have cages. Right. This doesn't. It just got this on the side. When you look right. back at going 118.76 in this with nothing on the side, what Stupid. do you think of that? Stupid. <laughs> I tell people, 
Whenever you look at the harness right here, I tell people really the biggest thing that was for is so if I was to flip, they wouldn't have to look for me. I'd be tied to the car because it's not going to help you. This cart right here holds two Guinness World Records. And so this will always be a, a special cart because, you know, me and Pop both worked on it uh, together. Uh, my father really wanted to have a world record. And Robbie did too, we all did, but my father really wanted to have a world record. And once that was set, you know, my father was on cloud nine. All right, Robbie, this is a Model T golf cart. There is actual golf cart aspects of this. What, where, what am I sitting in? Right. Uh, my dad built this years ago. Just one that he just handmade. You know, he just, he just liked doing stuff like that, building stuff. You don't want to go fast on something like this. Well, we both, you know, like to invent, uh, you know, seeing how far you can do things. Good example with Pop, you know, people knew how to, how to work him. They'd come in, something was messed up or broke, they'd say, Carson, I'm gonna bring this to you. I done took it to everybody up. They said it can't be fixed. And Pop would lay down what he's doing and said, let me look at it. And he said, and so they said it couldn't be fixed. Huh? I said, let me show you. And then before you know it, I don't care how long it took him, he's gonna fix it. Kind of hate he wasn't here for this, you know. I mean, he would really enjoy it, you know, going for another, you know, trying to break that record. But uh, I'm sure he's up above looking at us. There was a while there that, you know, he didn't like it. He, you know, tried to discourage me from it. Then when he found out I was gonna do it anyway, then he was right in there with it. You know, we all have good things, bad things, ups and downs, family issues and stuff. You know, no different from anybody else, but the thing is you don't give up, be it in business or on your family. Uh, I mean, we're, we're all taking a ride. You only get one pass through, make the best of it. Um, that's one thing about Pop. He told, you know, he'd say, you know, don't worry about me. Uh, Good Lord's got me. Hey, I've lived a great life. I've done things that other people didn't do, accomplished things. I mean, he had several patents, uh, inventor, uh, wrote his own book uh, with a sixth grade education. Um, just um, all of his accomplishments, and it, was, it wasn't like he was lucky. He worked for it. The business was started in 1976 by my father. It was called C.D. Steen and Sons. And my dad was working at uh, Springs Mill in Fort Mill. And so on the weekend at nights, we would do repair work, textile repair work and stuff like that. Then we got into doing a lot of R&D work. We changed the name to Steen Products Incorporated. At that time, that's at the end when we were starting to do golf cart motors. Every year, it, it took over a little bit more and more of the business until it got to the point that was the business. I mean, it just, it kind of consumed everything. We've been talking a lot about the world's fastest golf cart. Now let's check out how it's made in this building, the equipment in here. How long has it been around? Uh, building's around 1976. Equipment's back from the 60s, 70s. So it's old, but it gets the job done. All right, let's check it out then. All right, Robbie, so this is Jacob, your son here, right, and right. this is where things start. What, what right. happens here? Basically, uh, we unbox the motors, and then Jacob starts to disassembly. We'll uh, upgrade different parts, change out other parts, clean everything up, uh, because the motors get extremely dirty from the carbon dust on the brushes, and everything will be repainted and then reassembled, tested, boxed up, and sent back out. I learned from my dad mainly, you know, hard work pays off, what a man is, what you're supposed to do, how to take care of people. One of the big drivers with everything is we try to keep as much as we can in the family because if we've got to outsource different things to other people, that's money leaving the family. And you've been doing this since you were in diapers, basically? Uh, no, nah, I don't think so. I don't think I could lift a 50-pound motor in my diapers. If I could, I'd be pretty beefy. But you just do go about this so seamlessly right now. Uh, my grandfather always said that if you did enough motors, you'd eventually see them in your sleep, and I sure do. So basically what he's doing is doing a complete teardown tear so we can actually inspect all the parts and uh, see if anything needs to be repaired. 
see if someone left you some funny business in there right, or something right. like that. Why does someone send a motor like right. this to get it All fixed right. up? These are standard, uh, like these are off of a club car IQ, probably a precedent and all. These motors will get our Bandit upgrade, which is our economy line upgrade. And basically they'll pick up an average of anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. By law, they can't leave the factory going more than 19 miles an hour. They'll pull their dealer license and such. Well, to go street legal, a lot of states require 20 or 25 miles an hour. So you see, puts them in a pinch. That's where we come in. Enough's not enough. You gotta just keep pushing higher every day. You, you know, apply that to everything in life. You know, you gotta push to be a better person each day. All right, Jacob, we gotta go see your twin brother over here, Noah, and see where the disassemble goes next. Sounds good. So what Noah's gonna do is take the uh, sander and then he's going to sand some of the um, powder coating off the, off the can. We want it to look good because that's, you know, it's our brand. You gotta look good, feel good, right? That's right. <laughs> look good, feel good, Can't drive have it fast. Any other way. <laughs> All right, Noah, so what are we doing over here? Well, now that we sanded uh, the cans, we're about to blast them in this glass beater. So I'll pick them up from down there, put them in here, close this door, and uh, this machine's about to get really loud. The Steen family is, is close. It's, well, it's about speed, too, and that's a, a big part, but this company is all about bringing us closer together and just providing for ourselves and our family in a way that makes us happy. He got one part of that, I got the other part. Well, we both got stubbornness and kind of bullheadedness. I think that just runs in the Steen family. Pappy had it, Dad and Rick both have it. We obviously both have it. Well, in the mortal words of my grandfather, we're not smart enough to know we can't do something, so we're just gonna go ahead and do it. That stubbornness right there. It's always about balance, you know? And that's one of the big things I think of when I think of Jacob and my twin, you know, having a brother, especially as business partners. You know, it's one thing in normal life, but when it comes to the business, there's a lot of needed balance, and it was kind of already there. And I mean, he, he loves math. He's good at math, whether he loves it or not. I'm, I'm, I'm fine at it. I don't enjoy it. You know, I'd much rather go lug something heavy. All right, now we're gonna take the, the motors that Noah blasted and we're gonna weld our signature handle. We're gonna weld it? I'm gonna weld okay. it. You're gonna watch. I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna watch, <laughs> but I'm gonna stand okay. back. I don't think any Matt, of us have ever seen. Matt, I think Matt plays golf. Once or twice every now and then. I feel, I've never touched I, a golf I club. I feel like I've heard him say he played golf. So. Yeah, I don't think anybody else plays golf, but I do like to hit a couple rounds here and there. That is something I always found weird growing up, was like, we do this much with golf carts, why don't we play golf? We like racing them better than we like playing golf. All right, Robbie, we've reached the end here. We just got that purple paint on. Your brother, Rick, he closes everything out. What are the right. final steps? Well, what we do, the brush pack head has to be pushed, pressed onto the armature because it's a, it's a press on fit. Yeah, this is what I do before it's pressed on that armature. I had to put this brush pack in first. And once I put the brush pack in, then I will press the cap onto the armature. Once that's done, then I take the can and I line it up here. And I take the armature. Heavy stuff. Yeah, it get a little heavy. <laughs> and I set it in here. I, mainly the motor builder. And I put them together, I test them, I make sure they're running right. So that's, that's my main thing is make sure the motor stays together. The dyno machine is going to let us know that everything's working properly in the specs that we need it to be before we ship it out. Every motor has to make a trip through the dyno before it's ever boxed up and goes out. So long story short is you guys test it before someone else exactly. starts driving around testing. Exactly. If it wasn't for my father, you know, none of this what we got, we would have it now. You know, he's the one that started the company. Uh, he brought me and my brother in on it. Um, and then we took it to a next step. It was our grandfather who founded this and everything that this has been based off of. And he'd come down to the shop every day, almost every day when his legs would allow it. And just hearing him shuffle into the shop was almost the highlight of the day. He'd always be sure to tell us how proud he was of us. And that really meant a lot coming from him. My father taught me 
you know, if you want something, you had to earn for it. You know, a farmer would break something on a tractor and bring it up, and you know, my dad would fix it, and you know, he'd say, you know, what, what do I owe you? Pop said, oh, you don't owe me nothing. Just bring me some, you know, corn, vegetables, or something. And sure enough, they would come back, and I'll ask Pop, you know, why don't you charge? I mean, how, how can you, you know, how can you go without charging? You got to charge something. And he told me, he said, you know, said if I if if I can't help my friends. He said, if I can't help my friends, what kind of man am I? So, he was just that kind of guy. Uh, do anything for anybody. Uh, everybody in the community knew him. And uh, they respected him and all. And uh, I just looked back and hope I can be half the man. On the next episode, emotion is one element of this family's drive for success, but knowledge is another. How far can Robbie Steen push the science of speed? We go under the hood with potentially the new fastest golf cart in the world and find out exactly where crazy meets safety. And Robbie shows us how he plans on sharing his love of speed with all who want to go fast.